Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Hi. Good morning. Well, we're back on normal, kind of normal time now. I said, I woke up this morning. I said, what time? What time is it? What time wow. are we? we were in Idaho yesterday and now we're in Indiana. I said, oh, okay, we're on the same time zone now as as Myrtle Beach, at least. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. right. I who's, tell you, the weather, first, you know, the like, weather is so gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I am telling you something. I got up this morning and it was 77 in here. I opened the doors and it went straight down to 69. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wow. use natural convection, baby, so I don't have to use the air, you know? Okay. And it is just can. gorgeous, huh? Enjoy this season while it's while it's here. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's I like that when you don't have to turn on the AC or the heat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that's, that's how heaven's gonna be, right? <laughs> 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 Perfect weather. Oh time. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Idaho was awesome too. Idaho, I like Idaho because it's uh, it's very well. It's probably like California weather, maybe. I don't know. It's dry. It's drier. It's a oh yeah. There's no humidity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, my son it always reminds me when we were in Florida. He said, "This humility is killing me." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, yeah, it probably is." <laughs> but I like the wide open. Listen, I like the wide open ranges, spaces too. It's beautiful. Oh yeah. It has its own beauty, you know, yeah. and it's just. Uh -huh. like, you can see for miles and miles and miles, you know, and, uh, you know, the sunsets and the sunrises, but, you know, every, every place has its own. We, we, it remind me, we, when we were going through Yellowstone, we passed by this old stove out in the field and with the door open and it said open range. <laughs> <laughs> this thing must have been from the 30s but yeah we were talking about <laughs> believing it's uh, uh, you know how it is believing having your heart persuaded to believe and and i said you know i was just on that this morning that um believing you know he so he told the jesus told the pharisees he says unless you believe that i am he you will die in your sins in your sin but yeah. but also in the book of john john i looked up over 100 times the word believe is in the book of john wow and so i guess john thought that was an important word <laughs> yeah and uh and it's it's what that what that means you know to believe you know uh, to to believe in your heart you know and of course we know the faith is is the persuasion it's a gift from the lord that comes through hearing the word that persuades our heart to believe yeah. and to receive all that he has for us he wants us he wants us to uh of course he wants us to 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 have eternal life everlasting life in him to know him to know him and to know jesus to be in intimacy in intimate relationship with him and, and that way he said this is everlasting this is uh eternal life that you may know uh the father and the one that he sent you know so i love how he ties that all together but it's a romancing we talked about this last wednesday too it's it's the lord is has given us this the heart you know this this free free will in his heart and he's he's like he's in he's persuasion persuading our hearts to believe what he believes you know it's it, we call it the romancing of the you can call it the romancing of the heart or the romancing of the stony heart you know mm -hmm. the romancing of the stony heart you know that has been hardened through the deceitfulness of sin deceitfulness of sin Mm -hmm. Of course, the enemy wants us to believe one thing, of course, and a lie that leads to death. And, and our father wants us to believe the truth, right? That leads to freedom and life, eternal life. 
And that's kind of, you know, in a nutshell, what it's all about. It's all about everlasting life, you know, or death, you know, and which, which, you know, what, what is the fruit really in the fruit uh, will show what you are believing. That's right. You know, I was listening to Malcolm this morning and, um, you know, sometimes I can just listen to a word that just makes me so hungry mm -hmm. to really get into the word and study. Okay. I mean, I, I just have this desire in my heart and <clears throat> Malcolm really did that this morning. And he was talking about um, the goodness of God, mm. knowing the goodness of God and what knowing the goodness of God is not. Mm. And, you know, it's circumstances. When circumstances all line up to be conducive to your happiness and you say god is good you know um no that's not it it's being able to see god is good all the time <laughs> no matter what yeah and I, I and as i stop and i meditate upon that i'm like yeah that's what i want <laughs> I want to see the goodness of God. I want to be able to perceive the goodness of God, even when I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. It's not, and, and he was expounding on David in Psalm 27. Mm. I had fainted. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I always thought, I always thought that he was saying, I'm expecting God to change my circumstances. Mm. But that's not what he was saying. No. He was saying, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see. You know, you got to believe to see. Amen. Believing is seeing. Mm. Seeing the goodness of God. Wow. I mean, no matter what is going on, you haven't got a guarantee that your circumstances are going to be changed. Mm -mm. But you do have a guarantee that he will never leave you. Yeah. Thank you. That he will be with you in your time of trouble. Mm -hmm. And he will strengthen you. And he will enable you. And that, I say, wow. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's it. You know, just like uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind or imagination is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. That is a man that is expecting to be able to see the goodness of God mm. right now in my trouble. Can I see God is good? Mm -hmm. My husband is in the shed and he's got his front wheel, his rear wheel all apart. He mm. broke a spoke and then he finds all of the ball bearings out of the gears all fell out. Uh -huh. They were all shot. And mm. he's up, up in a mess up to his eyebrows. And I went out and I shared this word with him. And I said, you know, Jim, the thing is, you've got a guarantee that God is with you, working in you. Help yeah. in this mess. Yeah. It's like, amen. Yeah. I like that word. I love, I love that, how that, uh, and we've been hearing that word through Malcolm and different ones, you know, well, it's through the spirit, you know, 
bringing it through individuals, but our God is, uh, you know, uh, is so intimate with us, so personal. And it's not just the big things. Religion is made about, oh, just God's too busy, you know. No. You got to no. pound on his door to even get his attention. Right. You know, and all these things uh, and how that, no, it's, it's, and isn't it always the opposite of that, you know, yeah. that he's never too busy to hear your heart's cry. Amen. And that was, you know, that was actually what, uh, he wants to be intimate in every detail of your life, you know, even the, the spokes and whatever, the wheels, the, you know, but I actually, I, I shared that at uh, mom's celebration of life, how she was saved. She was going through a tough time. You know, of course, life seemed, you know, overwhelming, right? Yeah. To her, big. And uh, she was overwhelmed to it. Well, she was never raised in church, but she sent my little brother off to church, you know, who's 50 something. <laughs> now. But, what? I'm just going to let John in. Oh, she's in. Oh, John, I'm sorry. Yeah, John. Okay. Anyway, she she was going through a, kind of an overwhelming time. And so one Sunday morning, she decides, I'm going to go to church. And she says, I, I have no idea what the preacher preached, but someone got up and sang a song. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. Mm -hmm. He's walking by this moment, your need to supply, reach out and touch. And, and through that song, my mom encountered an intimate God, mm -hmm. and totally transformed her life. Yeah. And this was in the seventies, you know, and it was just like, she said, she walked out, the sky was bluer, the grass was greener. I said, <laughs> born from above. Right. Mm. So that's that the goodness we're talking about the goodness of God and mm. how intimate he is with us, you know, and personal. It's the opposite. Religion will tell you he's too busy. You gotta pound on heaven's door to wake him up and get him going. And you know, it's like he's you know, I mean well, it's let me tell you, in in the seventies. This is just to show you how God can speak to you through anything. I was the most ungodly person, okay? And I went to see Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you know Jesus Christ Superstar is so anti-Christ, right? <laughs> I came out of that feeling Jesus is watching me. <laughs> And the next day, somebody called me to go and, you know, do some wretched things. And I'm like, I can't. I'm sorry. But uh, Jesus wouldn't like it. They're like, what? I'm like, no, I can't do that. Jesus wouldn't like it. And that was the beginning of him drawing me. Exactly. That's crazy, you know. But I mean, you know, that's the goodness of God. That is the goodness of God. And. You know, the more, the more I come to understand his unfathomable love, I go totally to rest with every human being. Yeah. God's able. And this was a thing, too, that um, a couple of them said, you know, during the, that celebration with mom, you know, I had an open thing where people say, give you know uh, share memories and, and stories and a lot of them were for perspectives i had no i mean i was we were rolling we were actually almost rolling on the floor laughing during yeah. the okay uh but one of them was that someone says you know what about her she would always she was always uh meet you where you were at or love you where you were at and that's what god that's where god is yeah you know she was, you know, God will always love you where you're at. You know, he's not like, you know, he's not like this. Oh, I can't stand this cussing. You know, it's, just, oh, it's burning my ears. Yeah. Or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Love it, doesn't it, get it, offended. Huh? Love doesn't get offended. Right. He's not like <laughs> shocked by, you know, people's drinking and smoking and cussing and chewing. No. 
you know, he's just like, he knows that they're they're looking for life and, and yeah. love in their own places, but he's not. Look at Jesus. Jesus was a friend of sinners, which shocked the Pharisees. Yeah. No, now there was a time because of my believing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not, not endorsing all this stuff, but there was a time in my misunderstanding of the word, okay, and believing that I would like, oh, I can't stand to be around these people who are cussing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, it was just like so offensive. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I wanted yeah. to call down fire from heaven. Yeah. You know, I remember years ago when we first got saved, my husband was like that. And you know, <laughs> somebody you, you know, Jim was radical. Jim was super radical. Yeah. And if somebody used the Lord's name in vain. He said, you know what? I will praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. And this infuriated people, okay? And at this particular place where he worked, they hated him so bad. Yeah. They sabotaged a machine. He yeah. was the electrician mechanic. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went over and to, to open it up and he said, well, I got to turn off the, the power first. And they're like, we already turned the power off. Ooh. He's Ooh. like, no, I'm going to check. The power was on. Oh, my goodness. And when he opened it up, they had put ball bearings and pieces of equipment in there. Mm. That if he had started that up, it would have just broken up in his face. Ooh. Okay. And then another day he went over to do something and he turned the power off. They turned it back on. Ooh. And he grabbed a 220 wire. Oh wow. And it was a lie. <laughs> mm. And and of course, you know what happens when you're being electrocuted, um, you can't let go. Mm -hmm. And he was just like that, shaking, and the electricity was going through him. Wow. And then somebody went off and turned the power off. Wow. And we were all absolutely shocked because yeah. there was nothing the matter with him. Wow. They were, shocked. they were shocked. <laughs> they were shocked. And no pun intended. And you know, the boss, the head of the company called Jim in and he said, you know, Jim, I'm telling you, you're number one employee. I wish I had a hundred more of you, mm -hmm. but I've got to let you go because I have had so many men come into this office and say, if you don't get rid of him, we're going to kill him. Mm -hmm. One day you're going to come in here and you're going to find him hanging from the rafters. Oh. Mm. Unbelievable, huh? Well, you know. And, and you know what? He thought he was being persecuted for Christ's sake. Well, <laughs> and I, laugh, I laugh with it because I've been there, done yeah. that. You know, I had Absolutely. such an encounter, but then it, and, and this goes back to where the Lord loves us, where we're at, even in our absolutely Amen. Our, our yes. zeal, our zeal for our our zeal without knowledge, wisdom, right? right? <laughs> That's why we can have such compassion on people that are there because we've been there, and the Lord loved us right through all of that mess, you know. Oh my, you know, I used to, I was, um, I became a religious zealot. I mean, I had an encounter with God, but then I became a religious zealot. And I was, even in Idaho, I was, I was, uh, I got out of the service and living in a house downtown. And I picked up a newspaper one day and I saw that preachers were arrested downtown for preaching. And I said, those are the guys I want to meet. So <laughs> I walked down there and they were they were released from they were radical zealots too you know so i uh saw them and they all had big signs you know and they were preaching turn or burn and so i joined with them you know and uh just yelling at people as they're driving by walking by whatever and uh they would yell at me to go get a job you know 
<laughs> and, uh, but a lot of people, and even in parks, they would take their signs and burn them, burn their signs, and we call it persecutions. Sure. Yeah. You know? But now we found out there's better approach. <laughs> you know, I was talking to a brother down at the pool a couple of days ago, and uh, he said, you know, I just, I just don't know what happened. Why do we not have preachers preaching fire and brimstone anymore? Oh. You know, that's what will really, and I'm, oh my goodness. Yeah. And I, you know, I tried to tell him that, um, you know, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Right. And that, you know, you know, when you stop and you think of it, Paul never once mentioned hell mm. Mm -mm. or turn or burn. That's never. interesting. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm. Get sanctified or get French fried. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm said something else yeah. this morning that really blessed me. Mm. And you know, sometimes it can be just a statement that just grasps your heart and 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 then your imagination just grabs it and runs right. with it, you right. know. Sure. And and he said that God created us with needs. Mm. Human beings have needs. Mm -hmm. What kind of a good, good father would he be if he didn't meet our needs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's just that it's God persuading our hearts of his goodness and that he will always meet our needs and he's the only one that can absolutely and and the thing is whether he provides the food for you or he provides the ability that you don't need you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know he can do that too yeah look at look at elijah when he was down at the when the, in the time of the famine, mm -hmm. okay, there was no food. People were eating dove's dung, and that that was very pricey. And uh, he's being fed by ravens down at the brook Jabbok. Mm -hmm. Okay, twice a day. Wow, twice a day they're coming and feeding him. And I'm sure it weren't worms. <laughs> they were bringing him food. So God is able, you know, God is able to meet our needs and to know that he loves us that much that he'll do it, you know? Yeah, I was thinking, I'm uh, looking at this, the first, uh, what they, the first, what they, reference of, of a word, what do they call that? First mention? Yeah, law of first mention. And Exodus 33, uh, 18, and Moses said to God, please show me your glory. Yes. And, and then he said, and God says, I will make my goodness pass before you. And I will yeah. proclaim the name of the Lord before you, which is, he's a good, good father. Yes, he is. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, so it's just like, like you said, you know, it's, it's the goodness of God that leads us, uh, to repentance or to to come into our right mind okay of of seeing who god is and to seeing his heart for us and that is to be a, a father and that is to be a provider for us that that uh he is our our father and provider that he wants to again religion wants it's all emphasized about how we need to serve god and if we don't serve god then god's mad you know, God's yeah. upset, you know, like God's the one that's lacking and empty. And uh, he's got this anger issue, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and all these things. And it's so perverted and twisted. And yet it's the mainstream theology, you know? Yeah. It's like we're set up Well, God wants you, you know, God's our employer. We're the employee, you know, 
Yeah. There's so many things that, you know, that he needs us to do for him to please him, or he could just cast you into hell. You know, I mean, this is all the mixed up theology yeah. that people see. And it's just completely contrary that God, you know, is the one that came to serve us with, with his life, you know. You know, that whole idea there, first of all, let me just say it wasn't Jabak, it was Cherith. Uh, the brook where Elijah went. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, you know, it was the pagan gods. Right. The pagan god says, you know, serve me right, or, you know, I'll burn you up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's just, they've really just messed up Christianity with a whole lot of yeah. horrible, horrible fear tactics. It's mm -hmm. fear mongering, you know? Yeah, it's a pagan influence. Yes, right? it is. And uh, so it's, um, you know, uh, Acts 17 talks about, you know, Paul says, hey, God doesn't need anyone to even worship him. No. You know? Yeah. Or to serve him. You know? I mean, he wants to s serve us with his life. And here you're seeking gods out of your own imagination, formed with your own hands. Exactly. And there's no life to be you know and so it is really all about life and how the god wants to give us and share his life with us right and isn't that what jesus said i've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly and that tree of life is 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 there <laughs> the tree of life has been made wide open to everyone who would partake of that tree of life but we've been giving them a wrong message, you know, for the most part. Mm -hmm. It's not even a message of, of life. It's a message of do this or go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so it's just like, it's so skewed. Again, it's, 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 and I heard this this morning. I love this. It's the same thing that um, Jesus was, was tempted by in the wilderness by the devil. When the devil says, if you're the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. Right. In other words, take life into your own hands. Do something. Serve Prove yourself it. with life. Prove who you are. Prove who you are. And, you know, Jesus' attitude, I mean, he knew who he was. And he's like, I don't got to prove nothing to you. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and that is... That's the difference between Christianity, true Christianity, and religion. Because, mm. you know, the worldly Christianity, the worldly religion, it's all manipulation. You know, you've got to prove, you've got to prove who you are by doing this and by doing that. And that's how they get you. Because they never tell you who you really are. Well, they don't know who they are, so they can't tell you who you are. And so it's all, it's all about you've got to behave in such a manner that you prove who you are. And that's why you've got all of these buildings filled with people with masks on. Yeah. Because they don't know who they are. They don't know, that, know their true self. And they're projecting an image that they will be accepted by others. Whereas us that know ourselves, we're like, hey, I don't care what you think of me. I know my heavenly father thinks that I'm the bomb, baby. So you know what? It doesn't make any difference. You know, because I, I, years ago, people would say, well, you know, if you was a real, real Christian, you'd do this or that. Number mm -hmm. one time, when we first got saved, I had a brand new um, uh, Camaro. It was beautiful, man. Silver, blue, all white leather interior. And then I got saved. And I wrote across each wheel well of my brand new car, I love Jesus. And on the back, on the boot, 
I wrote John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever in permanent magic marker. Mm. And uh, Jim went to New York City to preach on the street. And some woman said, well, if I get saved, will I get a brand new car like that? Well, he came home and told me. And I'm like, well, maybe we shouldn't have a nice car. Go down to the dealership and sell it back to him. We, we thought that we shouldn't have anything nice. You know what I mean? I mean, we've gone the gambit, baby. All yeah. the poverty and, you know, that we thought that God was into that, you yeah. know? Um, but what's funny about that, they didn't want to give us what we really should have had. They said, well, we're going to have to give a brand new paint job on this car. You've ruined it, you know? <laughs> so it took off several thousand Oh. For, for that but what was so funny is uh later on an early saturday morning when there was dew on everything we go down this street and guess what i see my car and dew has settled on the car but where the writing is it's so they didn't paint that car they buffed it out but the th can you imagine being the owner of that car and you come out to get in and you see god so loved the world that he gave it they must have been thinking god's talking to me <laughs> hey you just gave me an idea we can get some of that uh that uh paint that only shows up at night <laughs> <laughs> Oh, in the dark pain. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, we heard. Uh, I was listening uh, to uh, the the roundtable discussion from Greg's uh, from Gospel Revolution Church. It had some really deep stuff in there. But uh, one thing that Cindy there was talking about, she heard uh, a preacher say, "Take on that you should take ownership of your struggles." You know, and she said, uh, better yet, why don't you just cast all your care on him because he cares for you. Hello, yeah. And, and that, but that took you, then it, the discussion turned to this where, where, you know, again, the other facet or side of this, when the enemy told Jesus, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread, take ownership of your struggles, you know? And, uh, but Jesus knew where, his life was and he knew who, who the his father was right and provider so it's the the spirit of the world says take ownership you know it says life is what you make of it god only helps those that help themselves right you know <laughs> and uh but jesus answers man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god yeah and and i was i was taken to galatians one on this or Galatians 6, 1 through 2. And it says this, Brethren, if any man is overtaken in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Well, I was looking at, okay, if anyone's overtake course in the past, we would think trespass is, you know, someone's fallen off the wagon, you know, someone's gone out and gone wild, you know, again, drinking, cussing, you know, running around, you know, really, but the trespass is looking for life and love where it can't be found, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Instead of looking to Christ yeah. as your life, you know, and we can all get caught up. We can all have those moments, okay, where we can have those fluctuations of, of thinking and the fruit will tell on you, okay? The fruit will tell where you're looking. Mm -hmm. because you, it'll be the fruit of anxiety or fruit of fear or fruit of or whatever fruit of death and that's to me that is more the uh, if, if you're being overtaken if you see someone being overtaken by a trespass right mm -hmm. you who are not judgmental or critical or carnal but you who are spiritual restore such one in the spirit of gentle uh, spirit of gentleness and it's like that spirit what's a spirit so he says the law of the spirit of life 
in Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death. So once, as we're established, okay, in this law of life, of, of our identity in Christ, knowing who we are in Christ, knowing where our life is, our life is not in the world. It's not in the strength of our flesh. It's not in things. Although we can have nice things to enjoy, but, but it's not in things. We are going to be more in a position, okay, to help others when they become overwhelmed or overtaken in a trespass. So looking at this scripture through the eyes and the lens of where we're at now, you know, it's just like completely different. You know, it's not oh, just modification. You know, you need to get right and stop that. Exactly. Exactly. Years ago, it would have been, we would have jumped on the devil's bandwagon <laughs> and them also. Yeah. You know, that's the truth. <laughs> How, don't you realize that, you know, you do be horrible, but to restore one is to, well, remember what Peter said. Peter said, you know, add to your faith. And that ad is epigorageo, which let them, you know, you, you, your faith will bring aside all of this, the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, um, godliness, brotherly kindness, and all this. And it says, if these things be in you and abound, you'll never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But if any man lacks these things, it's mm. because he is blind and he's forgotten mm. that he was purged of his old sins. Yes. So how do we restore one back into the faith? By reminding them of who they are because they've forgotten who they are and remind them of how much Jesus loves them and you know, that they are a partaker of God's divine nature and just wake them up to righteousness. They have fallen asleep. Right. And that what Paul did, the apostle Paul, you can see that reflected all through scriptures where he's dealing with the behaviors, the manifestations of the church. He reminds them who they are. Don't you know your, your body is the temple? Yes, absolutely. He didn't, he didn't say, you know, God is, God is checked out. You have offended God. He is, man, he is nowhere to be found, you know? Yep. The opposite. He reminded them of, of where their life was and the faithfulness, right? Even when we are un, not faithful, God remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. That's right. So you remind people and, and religious, the religious power mind would say, you can't do that. That'll just embolden their sin. It'll just cause them to become more rebellious. I don't think so. I think that's the mm -hmm. truth. Like you said in the beginning, you shall know the truth and the truth will, will set you free. It'll, it'll bring you back into your right mind, you know, because you have lost your mind. If you think mm -hmm. life is in this world, you have lost your mind. You've lost well, you know, the goodness of God leads people to have a radical change in the way they think. So when a brother has fallen and has forgotten who he is, how are you going to bring him to his right mind? By reminding him how much God loves him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of James too. He says in James 1, you know, when you start looking again through this, this uh, the right filter of you know, uh, of our identity in Christ and the fruit of, of right believing in verse 21, he, he, Paul, or James, he says, uh, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive the meekness with meekness, the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. And he said, be doers of the word and not hearers, which means believe the word. Okay. That's right. And, only, and not only uh, deceiving yourselves, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and will say is not a believer of the word, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, where he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets again, there's that yeah. word forget, yeah. what kind of man he was. But yeah. he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a believer of the I like this, the work. He didn't say works. He says, a believer of the work or doer right. of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. <laughs> and, and, you know, 
the whole book of James is coming against um, works righteousness. Yeah. That you're not saved by your works, you're <laughs> saved through faith. Yeah. And so yeah. when I see that put aside all super filthiness and yeah. superfluity of the flesh, mm -hmm. it's not talking about bad behavior. It's talking about your trust in mm -hmm. your works. Right. Because all that word filthiness, the only place I remember seeing it is all of your self-righteousness is as filthy right. rags. That's what he's telling you to put aside. Yeah. Because he's saying, you know, you, because right in the next chapter, he says, in chapter two, verse eight, if you fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, they do well. But if you have respect of persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors, and whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offending one point, he's guilty of all. So he's really trying to put the old kaibar on trying to be justified by your works. Yeah. He says, for he that says, uh, do not commit adultery, also says, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if you kill, that are a transgressor of the law. Mm -hmm. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Yeah, there you go. I love that. You know, when you, it's that James is one of those books and I've heard it. And once you begin to see it and it takes a minute, you know, because oh, your mind yeah. has to be renewed, but it's probably one of the most grace filled books in the Bible. Absolutely. And <laughs> it was, um, uh, who was the reformationist? Um, Martin, Martin Luther. Luther. Martin yeah. Luther thought that uh, James should be ripped out of the book the bible <laughs> he didn't like it no because he felt that it was preaching the law but right. it wasn't a law it was showing you know the work of faith is to believe well he says they said uh, they said what do we do that we may do the works of god jesus said this is the work of god that you that's believe. right that's right so i saw that even in a, a little different light this is the work of god that you believe and even that yeah. that it's god working in that's you. right it's the work of god it's god doing it right because the work in of god that you believe that's right because in philippians it says it's both god in you that gives you the will the ability to do his good pleasure so it's all god well, see if you're the, how you see how the carnal mind wants to even turn belief into a, a work that you yeah. do. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. And it says, no, God is working mm -hmm. in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. And, and the other scripture that says um, we're saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Right. It's the gift of God. Yeah. So, you know. What do you have that you didn't receive? Amen. And if you received it, why do you get proud and act like you didn't receive it? I mean, how stupid is pride? Because it's just like it's just like Satan, who got all blowed up in his own mind, how beautiful he was, like he created it or something. Yeah. I mean, he got his beauty and everything that he had because God gave it to him. And yeah. then he gets deceived in his own mind like he came up with it. It's no different than what we're here now. I love that. I'm enjoying this viewing. Yes, me too. <laughs> uh, where he says, when you come into the land, which I will give you, yeah. and you live in houses you didn't build, you eat grapes that you didn't plant. Mm -hmm. Don't say it's by the strength of my arm I got this. Exactly. What that mean? You know, I mean, whatever we can accomplish, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever we do, mm -hmm. uh, God gets all the glory because he gave us the ability to do it. 
how awful it is to turn inward and glory in yourself when it's gone. Yeah, I mean, and God knows our frame, you know, he knows um, our tendency, you know, that's why it's all through scripture. He's talking about put this on your hand and put it on your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> it's not by the strength of your hand or your great you know? intelligence that uh, you have come <laughs> into this place of revelation or yeah. I'm a you Christian. You need a little <laughs> box between your eyes jiggling to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you know what we don't have a physical box but he says receive the implanted word that's able yeah. to save your soul yeah and most of that is save your soul from what from you amen he <laughs> says i will write my laws upon your heart and in your mind amen <laughs> and what is that law it's all god <laughs> <laughs> exactly. that's right it's all God. It's all God from <laughs> the beginning to end. The mind wants to make it all about me. You yeah. know, I said, you know, the Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the Trinity of the devil is me, myself, and I. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking how God is the Alpha and Omega. You know, he's the beginning and the end and everything in between. You know? That's right. Yeah, and what he's a like, good, he, good, he, what a good father. Pot. Yeah, he's looking at this, the clay pot, and he says, "Look at that clay pot. He thinks <laughs> it's really doing something." Yeah. <laughs> yep. I like I like the way that you said um, this little box on your head in that. <laughs> I I I watched a movie this week with my wife and. Um, uh, can't remember the la lady who acted it, but um, just a lo lo lovely lady. And it was about a lady that um, she was a professor in English literature in in a university. Mm. And she was so, so, so clever, but she started to get Alzheimer's. Mm. And slowly as it progressed through the movie, it just showed the deterioration and um, how the relationship between her her daughters and her husband slowly, slowly changed to the point that she, she could no longer be coherent and she would forget everything. And as I watched that movie, I thought to myself, gosh, Lord, sometimes we forget. We forget in here who we are. And, and yet there would be people who, who will have Alzheimer's today and they're Christians and they may even forget the Lord but I like it that the Lord has us born again with the spirit inside of us. And whether we forget, yeah. he doesn't forget who we are and he is inside of us. Mm -hmm. And so in one sense, what we think, if we, if we totally lose it, we're still okay. It takes, Amen, the, pressure, brother. It takes the pressure off. Yeah. Um, like I used to do when I first got saved. I would be learning scripture after scripture all day, quoting scripture, trying to memorize it to get it into my thinking mm -hmm. and and live every day and walking around. Got to keep my mind on the word. You get Alzheimer's, you can't do that, but it's okay. it is still in our heart. And I thought that takes the pressure off. And you it was know, a lot brother, that is so true. And it's yeah. like people, I remember years ago, people saying, you know, um, unless you confess the Lord Jesus Christ, and they meant confess with your mouth, you know? I says, what about people who can't even talk? You know, you're, you're making, you got to jump through hoops, <laughs> you know? And uh, it's not like that. Or people that say, well, if you're, if you're not baptized, you know, you're not going to heaven. You know, and uh, I love the fact Jack said on Sunday when he was talking about Nicodemus. Um, so many times people use that scripture, unless you're born of the water and the spirit. Mm -hmm. And they say that means you've got to be baptized by water and the spirit. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he's talking about It because he's talking about the flesh. He's talking about the physical body. Because he reiterates that which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. 
He's talking about the physical body being born of water. And another thing I realized when Jack was saying that, the prerequisite to being born from above is you've first got to have born from below. You've got to be born from Adam. You've got to be a human. So it says uh, that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. Marvel not, you must be born again. So that cancels out the devil. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Because he's not human. And the scripture tells us in Hebrews that he didn't put on himself the form of an angel. Right. But the form of a human, he took upon himself human flesh. For what? To redeem human. Right. Right. Yeah, that's good. Well, I was thinking when John was talking, it says, you know, we, the Holy Spirit in us, you know, he's, you know, Jesus knew why we needed the Holy Spirit, of course. <laughs> and the to remind us, to comfort us, to guide us, to teach us, you know, like we were talking about the, the, uh, you were mentioned, the, uh, denying uh, uh, ungodliness. You were mentioned that scripture, right? Last. Yes. In Titus. Yeah. What is that again? Can you see that? Mention that again? Cause that yes. was, so you know, I so think good. this, this week I'm planning on, um, uh, picking up there. Good. Well, yeah. because that didn't get covered yeah and that is just so important and i've heard um if that is um titus 2 11 i've heard grace preachers preach this as though the grace of god will teach us to do good and not bad mm -hmm. okay and that would be to you know the grace of God will teach you how to live the law of good and evil. You know, that's, you know, it says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation, that word bringeth is supply. Mm. The grace of God supplies, that supplies salvation has appeared unto all men. And this is what grace will teach us. It'll teach us to deny ungodliness. And that, on is not so to deny that you're not godly you got to deny that you're not not ungodly because right. you see the world or the world will try and say well, look at you you're yeah. ungodly well the yeah. grace of god will teach you to deny that yeah you're It'll not you're not ungodly. You're a partaker of the divine nature. What are you talking about? Exactly. So the grace of God will teach us to deny that we're ungodly. Yeah, it'll say, it'll say when that voice, even through religion, you know, a lot of times will say, you're so ungodly. Look at your behaviors. You're so ungodly. And the grace of God says not. <laughs> exactly. And so... The thing is this, you got to look at this. It says denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Mm. Now, if you believe you're ungodly, then that is going to bring forth worldly lust. Because if you think you're ungodly, then you've got to try and become godly. Right. And yes. that's what will cause you to enlist your members mm -hmm. to try to become Right. And that's where you get messed up. So if you cut it off at the pass and don't believe that you're ungodly, mm. then you've just cut off the worldly lust that would be produced by the belief that you're ungodly. Oh, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. And it says that we should live soberly. Now, that word soberly is sozo with a saved mind. Mm. So you're seeing the comparison. Mm. Don't believe you're ungodly, mm. but believe uh, that you're saved, that you have a, that you have a saved mind, yeah. that you're righteous and mm. godly in this present age. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about two belief systems. It's not talking about bad behavior. Mm. 
And then in verse 13, looking for that blessed hope, that glorious appearance, yes. the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is keeping your eye on the prize. Yes. You know, we see in Hebrews 12, how it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, mm. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. See, he had the prize in mind. Mm -hmm. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Mm. And that word despising is to disesteem, to count as nothing. In comparison, all of this that he was going through, he valued as nothing compared to seeing what he was going to bring forth in the human race. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Paul said the same thing. He said, uh, these present afflictions mm -hmm. are not worthy mm -hmm. to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Mm. And so in our times of being pressed, we've got to keep our eyes mm. on what's coming, you know? And it's just, it dwarfs. As we, we look at what we're going to gain throughout all eternity, eternal bliss with our heavenly father, Mm. It dwarfs any temporal suffering. It puts it in its right perspective. It's a blip in time. You can't allow your present torment to be the big picture, you know, to fill the screen of your mind. It's got to be put in its rightful place. This too shall pass. I don't know if you, I, you probably heard that um, Timothy, Tim, Timothy Keller passed away um, this week or last week. Do you know Tim, Tim Keller? I've heard the name. I can't, yeah. I don't. A, a New York pastor, very, very prominent pastor, along with John Piper. And he passed away. And uh, uh, as I looked at that, um, the last... Uh, I think some of the last words that he was saying to John Piper was uh, after all his wonderful teaching and everything and pastoring, he said, I'm just pleased um, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah. See you later. In fact, that came to me too. Is this, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, goodbye. It yeah. was see you later. Right. Well, that was my embellishment on the end of it. That's just me. But well, anyway. that's, uh, I think that's part of the, the renewed mind. Yeah. We'll see you later. You yeah. know, it's not the final goodbye. Uh, mm. Death is not the final destination, mm. but life is. Right. And uh, well, after all, after all his teaching, if you looked him up, um, very well respected within Christian circles. And to just say, my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. He said, that's it. I'm, I'm happy with that. And, yeah. uh, well, that's, what, that's what Jesus said, you know, when his disciples came back rejoicing in the fact that the devils were even subject to uh, them. Right. He said, he said, I saw Satan as lightning mm. fall from heaven. That's good. He said, don't rejoice. At, why did he talk about Satan? Why did he throw that in the pile? Mm. Because that's how he felt. Mm -hmm. Okay. He says, rejoice not in this. Don't rejoice in your success. Right. Be, but rejoice in the fact that your name is written in the yeah. book of life or in heaven, whatever. But you, that's it right there. Because if you, if you get, you know, animored, with your own success, mm -hmm. you can all of a sudden, that wisdom can be turned to something ungodly, you know? 
That's incredible, really, that he said that, because it's just like, wow, what an ultimate teaching at the end. Yeah. <laughs> what it's really all about is is life, you yeah. know, and and uh, that we have life in Christ, you know, and that we've been delivered from death and we have life in Christ. Yes. Yeah. It's not all about, you know, us uh, seeing, uh, you know, so many people are excited about a lot of things. You know, a lot of Christians are excited about, well, we have dominion, you know, and, and, and all those things. You know? We've been getting dominion over the earth, over the sea, over the sea. You know, and that's basically Jesus is saying the same thing. What are you yeah. rejoicing in? You know, yeah. rejoice rather that your name's written in the last book of life. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so we can get so so easily sidetracked. I, I want to make a comment too that what John you said a, a while back about how that you thought you know, and we've all been there about the T-shirt, of course. How we thought it was all about us and our 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 good memory, you know, mm -hmm. or our articulate way of presenting things, you know, what I'm saying, or you know, and how that you know the Lord is really is telling us relax. You know, yeah. just relax, you know, and, and let yourself off the hook, you know, let your release yourself from the burden of it's about me and what I have to try and do or memorize or whatever, and know that it's Christ in you, the hope of yes. God. Yes, thank know you, Lord. It's not about our sufficiency. You know, I've whined about the Lord before, but I said, I feel so inadequate, Lord. <laughs> and I thought he would agree with me. You know, or pat me on the back, and you know, I thought he would. I thought he would pat me on the back and say, "No, no, no, you're no." But he actually oh. agreed with me, and he says, "You are inadequate." <laughs> That's right. In yourself, he it, says, "It's not about your sufficiency or your ability, but it's about mine." <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've had one thing through my Christian walk, which has been, it's really been a bug to me actually, and it's really got me quite down because the Christian church is often, and it still does, it says, well, you've just got to get out there and love people. Mm -hmm. And and I have, and, and you've got to love God. And I've always thought to myself, well, I don't love God enough. And I've always felt that. And then I've always felt, um, I, I just got to love people more and just got to love people. Church still keeps saying it. Oh, and yeah. I've, got to, yeah. I've got to the point where, I really just don't like that. And I said, well, I just can't do it. How can I love people enough? Mm -hmm. And um, But as, as you learn a different way, you go, well, I can't love God enough. I can't love people enough in my strength. Lord, it's your grace through me that allows, it lets me off the hook of me having to love everybody. Yes, lets you off the hook. <laughs> yeah. It's not and, what we produce. That's the way of Cain. Yes, you know, it's what we bear. It's the fruit yes. we bear. It's not the fruit we've tried to produce, and that's the that's the difference. And and yes. love, love. First John, love begins. This is love, not that we love God right. with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, but He loved us with all His heart, mind, soul, and strength. You could say that that God is knowing the exactly. love that God has for us. Yes. You know, receiving that love and then that love is birthed in us and manifests yeah. in us and you begin to see yourself loving even the most unlovable you know exactly. and it's, but it's a it's a it's 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 a fruit that we're bearing you know and, and that's how our uh, father is glorified that we bear much fruit and that you know and he wants us to know that we've been you know that we've been uh, uh divorced from sin from that old man Adam, and that we are in union with Christ, that we might bear fruit. Yeah, the glory of God. But I'm just going back to. I've uh, there's a lot of famous preachers and that out of the out of England as well as as well um, than America, and I do recall. I, I can't remember his name. Great famous preacher, theologian type guy, and he says. At the end of it all, um, for all of this study, he says, the one thing I've learned, Jesus loves me, this I know, yeah. this tells me so. And what a theological statement that is. You know, I remember reading about John Wesley, you know, one of England's most famous preachers. 
and he came to America mm -hmm. and he toured in the colonies and he was going back to England and he was on a boat with these Morovians from Germany and they were in an awful storm mm. and they were on deck praising God mm. and he was scared to death. <laughs> Now, this is a perfect example of that scripture in Philippians where it says, in, in nothing be terrified of your enemy. Mm. For in so doing, um, it shows the perdition of the lost and uh, a view of salvation. Mm. Well, John Wesley was like, he was beside himself. He's like, how can these people be praising God when we're about to die? Mm. <laughs> mm. And he said, how can you do this? And they said, hey, if we live, praise God. If we die, praise God. They <laughs> have no fear. And he knew he didn't have it. Yeah. He knew he didn't have it. And yeah. he came to know the Lord through mm. that experience. Mm. And uh, yeah, because he was afraid of death. You know, and when you when you know you got it, baby, you, you know, you've passed from death to life. If you're still afraid of death, we need to dig in a little bit deeper and, and see what we're missing. Amen. Yeah. Because uh, there is no fear of death. He came to deliver those who all their lifetime were in bondage mm. to the fear of death. And that's the, he'd taken the ax to the root of that tree, you know, yeah. now through the resurrection, power of his resurrection life, you know, we're delivered from the fear of death. And that's why the preaching of the cross and the resurrection is so important because mm -hmm. some, we, we go from extremes, we go from one extreme to the other, you know, but the gospel is about the death, burial and resurrection. That's <laughs> right. But I was reading in Romans six on, on that. Yeah. Romans 6, on that, he says, uh, six twelve. he says, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. And I can, I could even put in this, therefore, not do, do not let death reign in your mortal body. That's right. That you should obey it. That's right. In its lust. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin or death. Okay. Yeah. Or present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. Exactly. And that that is the next part of my message. It shows you that this is still a belief system. Yes. Don't present your bodies to the lie. You know, that you're not as you want to be. Because right. that is just going to cause you to enlist your members. Right, right. And and that's a law. You know, it's like a law in yourself saying. I don't meet up. I've got to do. Well, the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 56, that the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you in your own heart have a standard that mm -hmm. you think you have to live up to, mm -hmm. and then you put yourself under law and law is going to bring forth the power of sin in your life it's going to bring the manifestation of the works of the flesh right but and, we're free well you yeah, in the scripture says that that uh you know that we've already been raised with yeah. christ and we're seated with christ and we're to, to that is the truth that's not just a nice scripture no you know, but we present yourself as being alive from the dead. That's why I've become, and the more life-minded I become, okay, the less, the less, I mean, the more it puts my flesh to rest. It's just exactly. like, you know, I mean, it's no longer taking dominion over me because, you know, this flesh does not represent this body of death is not who I am. I'm called the body of Christ. You know, yeah. we are the body of Christ not the body of death. We're the body of the resurrection of life in Christ. And the law of the spirit of life in Romans 8. That's says, right. The law of the spirit of life in Christ sets me free from the law of sin and death. Exactly. 
And the thing is, when you rest in the finished work of Christ, when your heart is at rest, I am as I ought to be. Mm -hmm. And that conclusion is through faith. That is what I believe God believes about me. And that has nothing to do with my behavior. Right. Okay. So therefore, when I know that God loves me and I'm perfect in his sign, mm -hmm. then nobody can come to me with the lie that says you're not as you ought to be. Because if you believe you're not as you ought to be, that's the power to enlist your members and go down the wrong street. But it has no power over you anymore. What do you mean I'm not as I ought to be? Perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Mm. You, you know, is all I can say, brother or sister, you can't see what God sees. Because you're speaking contrary to what God's saying. You see what I mean? If oh, yeah. somebody comes with an accusation, mm -hmm. you know, who is he that will condemn you when it's Christ that justified you? Dare you speak contrary to what Christ says? Mm -hmm. But you got to be solid in that. You know what I mean? And if you're not, if you're not uh, of the same mind in confessing or in agreement with what has already been accomplished, then you engage in in carnal what, I, what we heard uh, even mentioned carnal uh, accountability programs yes absolutely or we can say sin management programs <laughs> where we yeah. you know we're just trying to manage our behavior you know let's get together and and, and make these confessions and see if we can ma at least manage our behavior. yeah <laughs> well that's not freedom mm -hmm. you know that's just, and, and when you think about it, you say, oh my goodness, how carnal is that? You know, that's not walking in true freedom. Absolutely. It's just, I mean, the world can do that, you know, you know, and it's just like, uh, but true, the true accountability is, is just knowing that, hey, it's, to me, it goes back to that, um, you know, that scripture I wrote, read in Galatians, if you see someone being overtaken in a trespass yeah. or you see him being taken yeah. over, overtaken in a lie, you can see it because of the fruit that's being manifest. Mm -hmm. okay. The fruit will tell on you of where oh, you're yeah. going. Okay. Absolutely. Whether it's set on things above or things on, on, on you <laughs> or on Christ. And so it's, but you gently, that you who are spiritual or in the right mind, gently restore such yeah. um, person back into you know that place of agreement right of, uh, of notice, notice he says he that is spiritual spiritual i mean please don't anybody go and try to restore a brother if you ain't spiritual no no <laughs> in the ditch. no no i no. have this uh this visual that yeah talking about fruit I don't know if you can see that without the reflection, but fruit to the root. And there's a lot to that because right. you see the, you can hardly see the roots under the ground. Right. But, um, you know, those could be uh, righteous roots. They could be roots of right believing. Right. Um, that we're believing the truth and that right. will produce beautiful fruit on okay. that tree. But those roots can also, I see them representing sometimes that the mind, will, and emotions. And sometimes uh, if someone hasn't renewed their mind, um, those roots will produce um, the wrong kind of fruit. Right. And so could represent, th those roots could represent wrong believing mm -hmm. about God, about other people, about right. ourselves. And sometimes once in a while, there's a prayer ministry I do with people that that really are bogged down by wrong believing. And, yeah. and this could be all kinds of different things. This could represent unforgiveness or forgiveness. It can go either way. Yeah. So it just really sums up what you've been talking about the whole time. Mm -hmm. And um, Romans 12 too, you know, 
just um, we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And when our minds are renewed with truth and right believing, then that's going to um, spill over into our emotions, which will then become more healthy. And it's going to spill over into our will where we make our choices. Yeah. We, we have choices every day. We have choices. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. And, yeah. you know, if people have wrong believing and they've got a lot of junk in the trunk, so to speak, <laughs> that we need, and Christians can have junk in the trunk. I think we've all been there, but it's like you said before, casting our care upon him for he cares for us. So you can literally, and sometimes people need visuals oh, <laughs> for yeah. them to get it. So it. we literally cast our care upon him because didn't he carry it already 2000 years ago on the cross? Okay. He carried all the negative junk and the wrong believing. He carried that all for us, but we need to get that revelation. And then the things that um, we really want victory over, we can we can picture him. The victory is in him. Mm. And um, the tomb is empty. And so we can walk in victory, but, but let's get rid of the junk, put it on him. He's more than ha happy to, to yeah. get it from us since he's already taken it from us. And then walk in victory. There you go. Amen. Thanks a thousand words. I love it. Yeah. It helps. It helps people. It helps people. I've been thinking about that lately, actually, about this. They have these new technical things where you can have them draw pictures and stuff. You know, illustration things. And uh, so I, I, we're on the same way, believe that, because, listen, I don't care what, how, well, however the Lord wants to, whatever way he wants to use to communicate the truth for someone to be see it and be persuaded in their heart to set them free you know he's going to you know even Beulah was talking about how God used some things right uh the Jesus Christ <laughs> superstar <laughs> yeah and, uh, different things I mean the Lord loves us he loves every one of us you know and mm -hmm. he's gonna, he his desire is to persuade our heart to see and believe what the truth is so that's awesome well, we're going to close pretty soon here. It's already a uh, quarter after 20 after, but um, and we've got a little appointment we've got to get to here at uh, pretty soon, but I want to open it up for any, anybody else, uh, Stephanie, Joe, John, uh, Janet, Jan, Jan, I see you over there. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Jane. We missed you last week. I miss being here. It was such a good Bible study. It was very good. I listened to it. It was very good. Yeah, my, kids, my kids were here from Massachusetts, so we were spending time with them, but it was very good. Um, yeah, you know, you know, it's keeping your eyes. We are spirit being. If we come to realize that we're no longer uh, walking in the flesh, that we are our spirit, we're born from above come to know that and keep our eyes there, then um, the truth, no matter what happens, you can see that, but you got to be able to see that. Yes. Yeah. yes. yeah. And did any of you listen to Malcolm's newest one, The Nurturer? No. No. Oh, it is so good. It is. It's beautiful. It, it's, he's talking about the Holy Spirit and the work of the holy spirit and how you know the spirit is unseen and is so gentle and the spirit is the one that is you know he talks about the the spirit well that god to create a full picture of him he needs the the male and female attributes you know mm -hmm. and the spirit in hebrew is actually referred to as she and it's that mothering nurturing aspect that's you know gentle yet you know he talks about the 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 protective instinct of mother to protect her children but it's that constant it's the spirit who does the work in us to persuade us of, of, of reality, 
of who we really are because we've lost our minds. We've forgotten. We live in that darkness. And that, you know, the Holy Spirit's not a prude. <laughs> he said that, that, you know, gets offended. You know, God's not shocked by anything we do or think or say. And we don't frighten him away. And just the constant word that the spirit is in us the same way it was in Jesus. And so it's this constant, this dance, this journey of discovery. Mm-hmm. I like that he says that, you know, because religion has taught us, so, oh, it's a destination. But no, really, it's a we're waking up to who we really are. So our minds are constantly going to change. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's not really, it's nothing that we have to strive to do, but it's the spirit constantly reminding us of who we really are and to always call on the name of the father, mm-hmm. you know, cause we constantly, you know, we've been trained to find answers in the world, but then, you know, those answers never satisfy. It always leaves us unsatisfied and in a bigger mess than we're in, you know, and it's this delicate dance. And he, you know, he even talked about how when the church threw out the Holy Spirit, then it can't became about memorizing, studying, studying scripture and memorizing it, you know, and I know years ago, you know, God told me, um, cause I homeschooled my son and he hated having to memorize things. And I, you know, and I remember hating having to memorize thing. And then God brought to mind, you know, he said, I always told my people to remember. He's off. You remember what I thought. You never have to memorize anything. And that was just mind blowing to me. And it helped so much that, oh yeah, he is there to constantly remind us. Yeah. Like, cause when you know him, you don't have to force yourself to have it stored somehow, you know, no, he, the spirit brings it to our remembrance. Yeah. You know, like you said, it lets us off the hook. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's you- the work of the spirit not that's the right. work of us to memorize or that's right yes no, I, i'll let you go Rick. I, but i was thinking when stephanie was saying that um i'm not sure what it was like in america but um in new zealand here through the through the 80s and the 90s if you went to church it was quite um the works of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit prophecy and words of knowledge that was quite a big thing but now it's all it's all fallen away you don't see that operating in the church anymore it's just more teaching on teaching but you don't see any laying on of hands or words of knowledge or anything like that now i find that interesting Mm -hmm. well a lot of churches become too intellectual and scriptural yes you know, they're, yeah. they're relying more. And, and what happens is you you turn to the God of your own intellect. Mm-hmm. And God wants to, you know, it's, uh, but you know, when you were, you were talking about the uh, the feminine side and the, the father and the, the, the motherly side. Mm-hmm. As I'm reading this book, uh, it's, uh, I'll have to forward it to you, but it's, uh, it's like sinners in the hands of a loving father, but mm-hmm. it is excellent. But he talks about a painting, a Rembrandt painted about uh, the prodigal return of the prodigal son that Rembrandt painted and where the father is um, greeting his son. And the son, of course, is in rags, you know. But one thing he, he, he uh, mentioned was that, that one arm, one hand, uh, of the father was masculine and one hand was feminine oh wow i don't know if you can see that but he says he didn't make a mistake he didn't make a mistake when he did that wow right awesome (laughs) it's kind of interesting you know yeah 
you know, how that God does. Uh, and it used, you know, reminded me of my mom, how God worked through her to, you know, when I was the prodigal <laughs> crazy person, she would just gently remind me, you, yeah. well, you know what you need to do. <laughs> and she was you know, saying, what it, you need to believe, you know, what she was very gracious and, and never condemning, you know, all these things, but it's that motherly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Elohim, you know, the the Trinity, the family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I see it, Father, Mother. Well, that's what he talks about. Okay. And yeah, you know, the the in the parables in Luke 15, you've got the good shepherd, the son, the uh, woman sweeping, that's the Holy Spirit, and yeah. the good yeah. father in the prodigal. So you've got the family. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting that when Jesus said, when Jesus said, I go away, but I'll send you another comforter, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I think, and, and that is that motherly Comfort. That's exactly what he talks about. And uh, it's like when a kid skins their knee, they want their mother. They don't mm -hmm. want their father. <laughs> because <laughs> the mother's the one that will comfort you. You know what I mean? So that'll be interesting. I have to watch that. But my mother also washed my mouth out with soap one time. <laughs> <laughs> me too. That happened to me once. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Ivory soap. <laughs> <laughs> haven't That's used this since. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyone else have any comments? It's been great. Joe, what what time? Oh, you're uh, you need to unmute yourself. I think there was some the, some noise going by there. Yeah, there you go. No, I'm back in Australia and um, it's 1.30 in the morning here. So it's yeah. been really good listening again. John can so. feel your pain, right? Listen, this has been, I mean, I wouldn't miss these for anything. This has been mm. so incredible. Mm. The Holy mm. Spirit is really doing something here and uh, building on some things and it's just... Uh, just where it goes out and people just touch their heart. You know, we just pray that it touches their heart and, and yes. brings them yes. the fellowship mm. that God desires to have for them. In Jesus' Amen. name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Very good. Bless you guys. Well, hopefully, Beulah, I'll see you next week. Okay, well, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, we got we to gotta see if the graph needs mode, I guess. <laughs> it's been it's been a it's been a great journey though it's been yeah. good and uh better things yet to come oh yeah amen okay love you, love you. Bye. Love you guys love, love you, you. Bye, bye bye stephanie bye bye